You mentioned exercise and weight-bearing exercise as an important factor in maintaining bone health. But Mary asks, what are the best therapies for bone health other than HRT? I'm really glad she asked this question because I exercise. I do a lot of the things you say. I do Pilates and weight-bearing things. I try to do, what do you call it when you put your arms? What do you got? Uh, planks, planks and weight-bearing exercise. But what about diet or supplements or any kind of pills to increase your bone health? Should I be taking calcium, for example? Should I be drinking milk? Tell me, because I've, I've heard it all at this point. So I really feel women should get their nutrition through food. I've had so many women come into my office with a little zippy bag filled with all sorts of supplements. And essentially our organs pick and choose what they need and the rest gets peed out for the most part. So really calcium, one should receive calcium through their diet, but it's really hard as women to get all the calcium that we need. So my feeling is I'd like to address which foods contain calcium. Obviously dairy products, many women don't wanna have dairy or they prefer not to have dairy or with age and frequent with menopause, many women become lactose intolerant and the plant-based milks are frequently, plant-based milks, nut milks are, are for the most part fortified with both calcium and vitamin D. Supplemental, and you, one might find a little calcium in broccoli and kale and almonds, but they should not be your sole source of calcium. For somebody who's really not having dairy or drinking that plant-based milk, then taking a calcium supplement is not a bad idea, but I don't like that to be, I don't like that to be somebody's sole source of calcium. And again, there's some data that too much calcium really is not good for the heart. It's not good for kidney stones. Some women are at increased risk for developing kidney stones. So that has to be evaluated. If somebody is seeing a clinician for the management of bone loss and it's recommended that they take two calcium supplements a day or a full 1200 milligrams per day, that's fine. Interesting news about vitamin D. Vitamin D is very important for calcium absorption from our GI tract. Their, you know, sun exposure will increase our body's ability to synthesize vitamin D. Certain foods that are we have in our diet are enriched with vitamin D. The plant-based milks, dairy, frequently enriched with vitamin D. Any woman who's going for a well woman visit most likely has a vitamin D level that's checked. If somebody needs vitamin D supplements, then they should take them. A new study just showed that excessive amounts of vitamin D will not help the bone and there's just no benefit. So a woman should know her vitamin D level, take supplements if appropriate, but just don't take supplements for the, you know, just taking supplements. But to increase absorption of calcium, should you take calcium with vitamin D if it's in supplemental form? Yes, 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 yes. And most of the calcium supplements, whether or not they're gummies or chewies or tablets do contain vitamin D and that's fine. But I wouldn't just grab an extra 5,000 I use a vitamin D just because maybe it's good for your bones. That's not the case. One more question about bone density. Why are these weight bearing exercises? And I think it's worth explaining what weight bearing means. Why are they so good for your bones, Dr. Brightman? So it's a great question. It's funny as, as doctors, we always talk about weight bearing exercises. So. I think many of us, I used to think, what, what are we actually talking about? So <laughs> there is an absolute correlation by between muscle mass and bone density. So weight bearing exercises would include obviously holding planks for arm strength, but also for core strength. You're really working your abs, but working out, and I'm, I'm not talking about kettlebells or eight to 10 pound weights, small two, three pound weights with repetitive, repetitive contractions of these muscles will help with definition, again, I'm a, I am love my bar classes. You're able to achieve long lean muscles. I, I think it's great and it works on both muscle and bone density. So how do we exercise our legs using resistance bands, those stretchy bands? And they really are very, very helpful. Also balancing on one leg, anything that works on, works on balance, that's weight bearing for the opposite leg, if you really think about that. and. It's really hard. Many gyms have closed. A lot of women have, you know, longer have a, their friend group where they would, you know, go exercise together. So the way in which so many of us have worked out prior to the pandemic, it's different now. So it's hard to find, but you can ask friends, or actually it's not hard to find, 
go online, find a workout video you like, or a series of classes where they can explain the safe way to exercise. And I think that one thing we all have to realize is that with age, the way we would work out at, at you know, when we were 30, it's very different how it is in our 50s and 60s and 70s. You don't want to hurt yourself, but if you're working out with light weights and using resistance bands, you're allowing yourself to work out safely and optimize both your muscle and bone density.